So now that we have the base geometry generated through NanoMesh and the ZModeler brush, we can now start generating details on top of our model using surface noise. So here I just have a quick example to kind of illustrate the process we're going to use. Now this example is currently rendered in BPR and I have this kind of fire escape kind of effect here. So you can see I have like the railings and the staircases and it's generated now in this kind of like tiling fashion. Now if I rotate this model right now, you'll notice that this 3D effect is going to vanish and I'm just left with something like this. So if I come over here to my subtool panel over here, you'll see that I just have two subtools over here. And if I turn on solo on both of these, you'll see that these are just literally single plane geometry. So this is just two plane 3D objects that I've then applied surface noise to to generate this effect. Now, as you rotate around normally, you're not going to see you know, the actual staircase there. But as soon as I render this with BPR, you'll see that all this surface noise is now changed into 3D geometry. I'm actually getting shadows cast off of it, and it's giving this really nice result. So this is the process we're going to use to add more details to our building. So to make this process work, I literally just have two subtools on top of each other and then a different surface noise applied to each. So this tool here and this tool here have two different alpha maps applied to generate the effect. So here are the two maps that are actually applied to the subtools. So this is actually applied to the top subtool, and this one is applied to the lower subtool. Now if I look at these, they're just simple gradient maps here, and depending on where the values are will determine the height of the actual structures. So this one here is generating the effect from the wall and the stairs, and then this one is generating the rails or the outer portion. So if I come back to my model here and literally just isolate one of these guys, so this is the first alpha and then just click BPR. You'll see that this alpha is generating the kind of bars and the actual stairs from the actual surface. And then if I switch to the second alpha, you can see that this alpha is just generating the actual railings. So when you combine these two tools together with different surface noises on each, you're now getting the completed fire escape look. So this process is extremely fast and extremely powerful to add details to your models. So now that we've explained briefly how this process actually functions, we need to actually create some alphas that we can actually plug into our surface noise modifier to apply to our buildings. Now there are many ways inside of ZBrush to generate an alpha to use with surface noise. In this tutorial, we're going to use the approach of generating some geometry quickly with the ZModeler brush, and then snapshotting that geometry on a 2.5D canvas to create a tiling texture. So to start off, first we need to just select a primitive. So I'm actually going to start with a cylinder 3D object, like so. And I'm just going to make a quick pipe object. So I have the cylinder 3D object on screen now. I'm going to turn off perspective quick. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to go to the initialize tab here. And I'm going to change some of these values. So right now I want to make sure that my alignment is correct. So it's facing the correct direction. So it's laying flat on the ground plane like so, which is correct. And then I want to change the actual divides on this actual model. So here I have the horizontal divide and the vertical divide. So if I turn on my polyframes now, you can see I have a lot of kind of vertical tessellation. So I'm going to come over here and set this to 3, which will basically disable that tessellation. And then I'm actually going to leave the H divide set to 32. So now that I have all those values set, I'm going to come back up to the top here and now just click Make Poly Mesh 3D. So now my mesh is a PolyMesh 3D object. And now I can switch to the Z Modeler brush and start manipulating the actual object here. So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard, isolate by letter Z, and then press M to select the Z Modeler brush. So now with the Z Modeler brush selected, I'm gonna come through and add some edge loops to the actual cylinder here. So I first wanna add an edge loop around the actual cap here. So this is gonna allow me to kind of do some other features if I need to get to them a little later on. So I'm just gonna start at one of these edges towards the outer edge and simply click and drag, and that's gonna allow me to add that edge loop like so. And then if I come to the actual bottom and repeat the process. So there we go, we got those edged out. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to actually scale this up because right now it's a little bit short and so if I want to do a pipe you know I want to make it a little bit long. So I'm going to hover over a poly on the actual top of the cap here and press spacebar to go into the Z modeler poly menu and I'm going to locate the actual move action up at the top and with the move action selected I'm going to change my target to flat island. 
Now with move and flat island as my target, if I come across any polys on the top of this actual cylinder here and simply click and drag, it's going to move that entire flat island. So this will allow me to come through and quickly change the actual dimensions of that cylinder object like so. So now I have it set to a good size length for this actual pipe. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some welded or actually bolted type areas to the pipe because these would be connected across multiple pipes to make one really long pipe. So to do this, I'm going to hover over one of these actual edges here. I'm going to hold spacebar to go into the Z Modeler Edge action menu. And now I'm going to select the target of multiple edge loops. Now with the target of multiple edge loops selected, if I turn back to my model and simply click on the edge and drag, I'll start generating multiple edge loops across the surface there. Now I don't need this much kind of edge looping established, but I basically wanted to make sure that any single area where I have this kind of joint section being created, that it's a consistent size. So I'm actually going to come through now and remove some of these excess uh, poly loops here that I no longer need. So to do this, I'm going to come through and just hover over an edge again, press spacebar, and now select a single edge loop. And now if I hover over an edge and while holding alt and click, I can actually come through and start removing some of these actual edge loops on my model. And so I just want to come through and leave some of these areas for these actual welds and then actually remove a lot of the other ones. So I'm not really too concerned about uh, consistency at this stage. I'm just looking to make sure I have nice kind of areas of welding. And then the one thing I want to make sure is that I have a area on the top and no area on the bottom. Because this is allow me to come through and actually stack these in a vertical fashion and have it look a little more believable um, as actual you know, pipes would be when they're actually extending a long surface. So now that I have this kind of generated like so, I have consistent polygrouping on some of these loops, but I want to make sure I also have a polygroup here as well. So I'm going to come through now and just give each one of these actual poly loops here a similar polygroup. So to do this, I'm going to hover over an edge again and press spacebar to go in the Z Modeler Edge Action menu. Now I'm going to select the action of polygroup, and I'm going to make sure my target is poly loop. Now if I hover over any edges that form an actual poly loop and simply click, you'll see it's going to assign a new poly group to that area. Now if you click and hold while you're still holding, if you press Alt, this will actually allow you to cycle through different colors of that actual poly group. So I'm going to use this one here, which will be a little more visible, so I can actually see it in relation to the other areas of my model. And then to repeat this poly group elsewhere, I'm just going to come through and click there, and click there, and click there. So now I have all these areas now have the same polygroup on my actual mesh there. Now the next thing I want to do is actually expand these areas out to give that kind of joint or welded kind of look to the actual pipe. So I'm going to hover over one of the polys that forms one of the polygroup loops here, so this one here. I'm going to press spacebar again to go back into the Z Modeler poly menu. Now I'm going to select the extrude option and then as my target I'm going to select polygroup all. So now with the polygroup all target selected, when I go to apply this extrude option to a polygroup, it's going to apply it to every single area on the model where that polygroup is applied. So if I come across this polygroup here and simply click and drag, it's going to extrude all the other areas with that same polygroup. So now you can see that I've gone through and now literally added that kind of joint function to all those polygrouped areas on my model. So now that process completed, I turn off my polyframes here. You'll still notice that this pipe is looking quite a bit tessellated still. So I'm actually going to come through now and use creasing and dynamic subdivision to kind of smooth some of these areas out. So I'm going to turn polyframes back on. And to do this, I'm going to come over here to the geometry tab here and I'm going to locate the actual crease submenu here. And I first want to change this tolerance to say 45. So I'm going to come over here and click on that and then type in 45. Now with this set to 45, when I now hit this crease option here, it's going to come through and crease all the areas of my model based on that 45 degree angle. So if the angle is about 45 degrees, it'll apply a crease to those edges in between those two faces. So just coming over here and clicking, and you'll see now I've gone through and actually apply creasing to all these areas. Now with this creasing applied, I can now turn on dynamic subdivision by coming to the geometry tab again, going to dynamic subdivision, and activating dynamic subdivision. Now if I turn off polyframes now, 
You can see now I have dynamic subdivisions active on my model. So I haven't increased the actual polygon count of the mesh, but now you can see I'm getting the illusion of that model being high resolution. So now you can see I'm getting that kind of nice, soft kind of pipe shape on my actual model here. Now the creasing process when used with this dynamic subdivision mode is holding those edges and keeping them harsh. If I come back down to the crease menu and now do an uncrease all, you'll notice that now this is the effect I'm getting with that dynamic subdivision active. So as you can see, the creasing is allowing you to hold kind of harsh edges on your actual model. So I'm just going to apply that back on again, and now you can see we have the pipes holding those edges and looking very smooth. Now another thing to note with actual creasing is that you can actually come through and manipulate the creasing as well using the Z Modeler brush. So if you hover over an edge and press spacebar, there is an action underneath the edge menu called crease, and this will allow you to come through and change the actual creasing on your model. So if I come down here to the target and say select edge loop complete, and now return to my model, if I hover over one of those creased edges and hold alt and then click, it will actually uncrease that edge. So now you can come through and start tapering or tailoring different areas on your model here to generate different effects. So as you can see, as I remove the creasing from that area there, I'm getting a softer kind of edge on the model there. And if I want to apply that creasing back, just turn polyframes back on, hover over that edge again, and simply click, and it'll recrease that entire edge loop. Now, when you're using dynamic subdivision mode too, you can toggle it on and off to see your original cage versus the actual dynamic subdivided one. There's a hotkey for this, and it's just Shift D and D. So you can come through and just hit Shift D to automatically turn off dynamic subdivision, or D to turn it back on. So this is helpful if you're coming in increasing areas on your model, and you may not be able to select an edge precisely, so you can actually switch out of dynamic mode, apply that creasing to that area, and then turn dynamic mode back on. So now that we have this kind of pipe completed, we can actually start using this to kind of generate an alpha for our actual buildings.